trash. He raised up the prophets and messengers to educate the people, inform the people, and get the people on the right track. So throughout the course of time, God has raised up prophets and messengers among Israel. Even Jesus said out of his own mouth that I am sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. He was sent to Israel for what? He was sent to a very wicked and rebellious people. That's right. Is that right? That's right? And those same people that this man Jesus was sent to 2,000 years ago were the same people and are the same people who are in charge of America today. Oh, make no mistake about it. Don't think that those that you elect to office are the real ones that's in power. Right. We all went out and stood in long lines and elected our brother, Barack Obama. But there's a hidden hand behind Barack Obama that's really calling this shot. When Jesus was raised up among these neophytes, these hypocrites, they had a death decree set out for Jesus before he was born. So Herod said what? Kill all the male child, two years and under. They were on a mission, the government was on a mission to kill Jesus before he was born. That's right. Tell me that America is not on a mission to kill the black man, woman, and child. That's right. You've been here for 400 years. You heard our brother come up talking about how the black farmers are being discriminated against. We've been asking for justice for 400 years. We ain't got it yet. And if we look at the research that has been done in this country by the Carter Commission, the Carter Commission did a report after Dr. King was assassinated because over 100 cities burned. And they said we was moving toward two different types of murders. One black, one white, separate and unequal. 30 years after that, they went back using your tax dollars, did further research, and came back and said that the black man, woman, and child in this country is in a worse condition than we were in during the Civil Rights Movement. I want you to understand, and you will understand today, that we have not made an inch of real progress. Right. Jesus was raised up a son among these people. And what did he discover when he went among them? Jesus discovered that those powerful Jews, that when Moses left, when Aaron left, they took the book called the Torah which is the first five books of the Old Testament was put in the hands of the Jews. Right? Sure. They took that book 500 years before Jesus was born and they began changing the book. Yeah, they did. They began going into the book, taking stuff out, rearranging stuff, adding their own stuff in, Right? That's right. And after a while, they took the Torah, which is the book all Jews are supposed to follow, and they threw it behind their back. And today they follow a book called the Talmud. That's good. Yes, the Talmud, they began writing the Talmud 500 years before Jesus Christ was born. That's right. So Jesus came up in a world, in a community, in a society that was already off track, even though. Even as me and you was born in a community and a society that's already off track. <laughs> Jesus came and he saw what the Jews was doing in terms of manipulating the people and changing the word of God and oppressing the people. So he began to speak out against those powerful Jewish rulers. That's right. One point in the Bible, he comes to them with an other branch. Right? He comes, when he first comes, leaves out of Egypt and goes on his mission, which only lasted three years, he came in contact with his first cousin. 
John the Baptist. John the Baptist was baptizing people and he was preaching at the same time. When he baptized Jesus, which the physical baptism has a, both a spiritual and historical meaning to it, when he baptized Jesus, he put something in Jesus' spirit. So that only after the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist did, the, did, did something a call come from heaven. Here, here is my son in whom I will please. But it never happened until John the Baptist baptized the man. John the Baptist was working and he was in the midst of people who were angry and upset and trying to persecute him. So Jesus took that same message. After he was baptized, he left. He started his ministry, which lasted for three years. That number three is very significant. He started moving about preaching and teaching. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. In his teaching, he ran and took the religious leaders of his day. The scribes. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. And when they encountered the message of Jesus, they knew that the message that Jesus had was in conflict with what they had been teaching the people. That's right. So Dave Farrakhan has a message in his heart and in his mind that's in conflict with what the overall general religious population of the world has been teaching the people. That's right. So that now he has a government on his shoulder, even as Jesus of 2,000 years ago had the Roman government on his shoulder. That's right. That's right. Man. Mm. Jesus began dealing with these powerful Jews. That's right. What were the Jews doing? They were using the Talmud, their religious customs and practice that they invented that were not of God. Corner of the money mark. That's right. Right? That's right. That's right. How do we know that that was being done? Because when Jesus went into the temple, he encountered the money changers. Right. Ooh. Who were the money changers? All of us who have been in church for 5, 10, 15 years. Who are, who are the money changers? What was the signs of what they was doing? Right. We don't know because the preacher ain't taught us right. That's right. But I'm gonna give it to you uncut. Come on, wait. These Jews who were very powerful had cornered what was referred to as the half shackle of the sanctuary. What is the half shackle? The half shackle was a very specific coin that was in half an ounce, silver coin that was a half an ounce in weight, pure silver, and it did not have the image of any pagan emperor on it. So what these very powerful Jews did, they would take and buy up all of these coins and collect them. And as the people who were trying to serve God had to have this particular coin, in order to pay their tithes in the temple. So they took this corn and they drove the price of the corn up real high. <coughs> and they would sell this corn for two, three, four, five, six, twenty times what it was worth. In the name, robbing the people in the name of God. So we have the same thing today. You go and try to get you a car, and you ain't got the money. The car costs $20,000, but before you get pennies paying for it, you done paid $40,000, $50,000, $60,000. Right. We're dealing with the same Jews. We're dealing with the same satanic forces that Jesus was dealing with. That's right. The Jews who are over everything now. The same ones that your tax money go to every month to Israel. They rejected Jesus. They said that Jesus was not the Messiah. They said that he was 
not a prophet. They said that Jesus was not even a righteous person. And today they have written in their Talmud that Jesus is in hell. That's right. These are the same people that the preacher prays. These are the same preachers that the preacher look up to. These are the same people that own these banks. That's right. That the so-called men of God are going to bow down to for money. That's right. Talk back to me. So Jesus was in this controversy with these Jews. He was calling them out. He was calling them to task. How will you know the man of God when the man of God is in your midst? Not because he's just some Negro preacher. But the man of God does the work of God which is calling out Satan. And if he's not calling Satan out, then you know he's an imposter. That's right. Mm -hmm. They said that Jesus was an imposter because he had the wisdom and the courage to call Satan out of his hiding place. You don't see no preachers in this city calling Satan out. Listen. Huh? Mm -hmm. They teaching the people, but what are they teaching the people? Giving them a good feeling, but they don't have the knowledge or the power to change their own life. Yes, this is what Jesus had to deal with. Because the scribes, the Pharisees, the rabbis, they had the minds and the hearts of the people. So when Jesus came, he did the same thing that the unblind Muhammad said that his work was, which is to be involved in the war for the hearts and minds of the people. Jesus was in this fight with these people. He was going throughout the community, cleaning people up, healing the blind and left, giving those who didn't have the strength to walk the strength to walk, giving those who had a knot in their tongue, unloosening the knot in their tongue, and giving them the ability to speak truth. And these Jews became very, very angry. At one point, they began to confront Jesus face to face as Jesus had now discovered them and was calling them out of the hiding place. There at one point in the Bible we read that Jesus was in a debate with the Sadducees. The Sadducees were considered the highest spiritual authority at that time. That's right. And Jesus kicked their backside. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were never friends of each other. But when the Pharisees saw that Jesus had put the Sadducees to flight with the spirit of his wisdom coming out of his mouth, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came together to begin plotting against the life of that man that we call Jesus. See, there's a man in your midst today who when he speak, he opened the ears of those who haven't been able to hear. When he speak, he takes the knock out of the tongue of those who haven't been able to speak. When he put something in your spirit, you're just not a dead, regular Negro. You get up and you become productive. That's right. And the Jews of this day, these brothers, are mad. The Jews have a claim. I would like to take them to task and they claim. They say everywhere that they have went, they say that they have been persecuted. That's what Why have you been persecuted? Why have people driven you out? All in Europe, you were driven out. That's right. Hitler was working on driving you out. In Mecca, 6,000 years ago after you was created, you were driven out. Why are you being driven out, Jew? Because everywhere you have went, you have caused trouble. And once you are discovered, people drive you out. You 
try to infiltrate the Masons in order to create this group called the Illuminati. The Masons discovered you here in America and they drove you out. There were some of you that were here among the Masons. You hid yourself. Still had the same evil, wicked agenda, but you were hiding. They didn't have the opportunity to drive you out. Some of you Jews changed your name. So to make it harder for you to be identified, you took on the name of European Anglo-Saxons. But you're still doing the same work with your fathers. Nothing has changed. You changed your name and kept on playing the same tune. Kept on with the same behavior. So today, black people in America are here. And what we are discovering now is we're here because the same people who crucified Jesus hey, have and have intentions to crucify you and I. I want to make my point here in a minute. Jesus was calling these devils to tears. And as it says in the Bible, that as Jesus was calling these demons out. That the demons were coming out hot and cussing and screaming and stomping. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is calling them out today. He's exposing them for who and what they are. The scripture says this. The scripture says that Satan is a man. But the Jews have taught us through the, the teachings of the Talmud and through them being the head of the religious authority of the world and influencing the religious leaders, they have taught us that Satan is some unseen force, either in the sky or up under the ground. Yet the Bible says concerning Lucifer in the book of Isaiah, how have thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning glow? How have thou fallen from heaven? And then it said, slaughter for the iniquity of their children so they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the land with sin. What is it talking about? <coughs> is it talking about some spirit floating around hopping in and out of people? Is it talking about something that's in the ground that's causing all of this trouble? No. Nothing in the ground killed Jesus. Nothing in the ground killed the other prophets. Nothing in the ground beheaded the apostles of God. Then after Jesus left, they came behind Jesus and killed all of his followers. Nothing in the ground did that. But they want to sell you and me the dream that there's something inside the ground causing all of this hate. Huh? Jesus was involved in this heated controversy. As I said, they did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. They did not accept him as Christ. They did not accept him as a prophet nor as a righteous man. I will tell you this, and it may sound as, as blaspheme, but keep an open mind. They are very near correct about the one who was here 2,000 years ago. They are very near correct. What do I mean? That Jesus who was here 2,000 years ago was not the Messiah. Paul said he was a man born out of due season. He was a righteous man raised up to reform the Jews. Not to destroy them, but to reform them. And there's a difference. Jesus was rejected by them. So even though they had been working on the time move for 500 years, when Jesus came, they didn't quit working on that corrupt book that they was making. Them. They worked on it for another 500 years after the man was gone. Right? So what is the difference between the man who was here 2,000 years ago and this one who is called the Christ or the Messiah? Christ is not a last name. Christ and Messiah is a title reserved for a very special human being in whom is God's spirit. This human
human being is anointed with wisdom and with power to crush Satan. Jesus of 2,000 years ago, the great work that he did, he was rejected and he did not crush Satan. We're still living in a world where Satan is in charge. Talk back to me now. If I'm wrong, let me know that I'm wrong. But from what I see, we are still living in a world where Satan is in charge. That's right. Right? So when you look at the different aspects of the world, when you go into the education, Satan has kicked the idea of God out of the educational system. When you go into the law, they have kicked the very idea of God out of law. The Jews control Hollywood. They have kicked the very idea of God out of Hollywood. So now you're going to be a black man and you're going to rise to the top as an actor or entertainer, you have to do what? You have to get down in dirt. You have to either dress up as a black man, dress up as a woman, and act like a damn faggot to get to the top. Or you have to call your sisters, black women, bees, and ages to get money. So this looks like to me that Satan is still in power. So they're very near correct. That one who was here 2,000 years ago was not raised to crush them out. He was raised to call them out and to expose them. But he was not raised to crush them. But in the book of Revelation, it talks about one. Say so he will be coming. Think, think not that I come to sit in peace Nay, I come with a sword. And it said that he will come at the head of 10,000. And there will be blood dripping from his soul. It said that blood will run in the streets all the way up to the horse's bridle. And I don't know how many of you all have rode horses, but the bridle is up here. So this one who is called Messiah of Christ, he comes to make war. I want you to understand that. You can't say that you're on his side if you don't understand his work. No, no. You can't say that you're going to be with him if you don't know how to identify him. How do we identify this one who is referred to as Messiah or Christ, we identify him by paralleling his work or contrasting his work to the work of the Jesus who was here 2,000 years ago. Because before the final destruction, he comes doing what? Teaching as Jesus taught. There is not any man on the planet. The whole 196,940,000 square miles that is doing the work of minister for Not one among the Jews, the Christians, or the Muslims. There is not one man that is doing the work of minister I'm going to make my point in a minute. Now, what did they use to get Jesus? What did they use? Now, they said that Jesus was moving among the people and doing great works. And when, he, when the Jews confronted him, he said, for which of these great works that I do, these good works that you stoned me for? Jesus looked at him and said, these words, why do you, why you wish to persecute me? They said, we are not stoning you for the good works that you have done. We are stoning you because you being a man, blast people, and say that you are, make yourself equal to God. You see what I'm saying? 
What are they saying today? Why do they want to stone Pharaoh? Why? Not because of his good works per se, but they fear being exposed as the same satanic force Jesus was fighting against. That's why they wish to kill God's man. 